Hello, good morning and welcome. I'm here in Coronation Gardens in a small town just next to Kirkintilloch where I live in Lenzie and this is a Field and Trust site. It's a one memorial garden um, and it's not the biggest garden in the world. It extends uh, across two sort of areas, two grassy areas, and it is there to commemorate those who have fallen in conflict in order to preserve our freedom. And I am sitting on what is a fantastic uh, little bench. Um, I'll try and move this around so that you can see uh, the sort of graphic that it depicts uh, of conflict in the midst of the White Dove of Peace. So. There's two of these benches in here, and this is a field and trust site, which means that it's a protected site. Um, one of two, I believe, in a kind of local area or in Scotland, I'm not quite sure. But what this does is, within the context of a small community, remind us of the sacrifices that those who have gone out and made in order to protect our freedom. Um, those who have not dodged the draft those who have not decided that they are conscientious objectors, although those who do have a genuine reason for not going out and fighting, of course, are very well respected. And recently, within the United Kingdom, particularly within Scotland, we have gone back to those that we disgracefully uh, shot and killed because of the refusal to fight and reinstated them as men and women of conscience. Um, and celebrated that contribution that they have made to democracy, which is to provide us with the idea that democracy is not just about freedom, it's about debate. It's about being able to live within the context of a society where you have differing views from the majority, but you retain that respect that is due to you. So this week, um, I'm in the midst this weekend of doing a lot of my writing, um, Held a little bit back because it's been a, a quite a, an interesting week at work. Um, I've got a post up in Fife that I am advertising for and got a lot of applications in, about 30 odd. Uh, many from all over the world because it was advertised in LinkedIn. So I've got people from Philadelphia, Qatar, Mumbai and so on. I didn't realise that Fife was quite as attractive as that, but there we are. So... Um, not struggling this weekend to get things through, Brad, honestly, but my first one's going out there, the Italian fighter, Alexander Damiani. I also got my flashback and fast forward stuff up for Talking Boys yesterday. Um, and of course, I'm looking forward to the, the flashback stuff for this week, given the shock last night in the heavyweight fight. Not Alan Babich against Shonda Winter, eh, the tough, tough American uh, that he beat in the second round, uh, whose name has just escaped me there. Um, and uh, Pursun versus Taylor, the rematch. But the rematch is a phrase that uh, at the end of fight camp last night uh, in the matchroom square gardens was heard quite a lot by the defeated fighter who has now lost his WBC mandatory position after taking one risk too many. Also, uh, for football, I've been looking at Daryl Broadfoot and his role within Scottish football. And it falls within um, what I've learned this week, uh, that particular um, thought and idea. However, before I get there, fringe review this week, I've done three reviews for the Space online at the Space UK. Uh, Edinburgh Festival Fringe is obviously not happening this year. The space was one of the big conglomerates of venues. There were quite a few spaces. Space at 45, Space in the Bridge, Space, uh, the Triple X space, um, and so on. So they've got 80 shows that are online, um, and I've now looked at four of them, um, enjoyed them. Um, but again, these are what I like to see is that they've taken risks. They're not these kind of big scale adverts from the likes of the National Theatre or so on and also found the Baked Beans Theatre Company which is a brilliant theatre company. Wandsworth, Wandsworth Arts Fringe is where I found them. They work with uh, adults with learning disabilities and what a bunch they are. They have done a, a little video, it's about seven, eight minutes long, 
which is about keeping safe during COVID. And I have to say it's the best I have seen by some considerable distance. So, what have I learnt this week? First thing I learnt this week is that John Biden, Joe Biden rather, made a bid for the White House in the 1980s. Having a wee look back at what it is that would draw people towards Biden's presidency bid, I thought one of the things that he is trading on is his longevity and also his experience. And of course, one of the guys who I didn't know much about before I did a little bit of research a few years ago was um, Kerry and how he had stood up in the anti-Vietnam War protest and he had, I believe, given evidence to a congressional hearing as to why it was that the Americans should pull out of Vietnam. When I add that to also coming up in my timeline, uh, the celebration of Muhammad Ali's life, and the fact that he objected to going and fighting in the Vietnam War. And what I started here with, being in a commemorative garden to those who have fallen, but also recognising that we owed a debt to conscientious objectors, it all kind of falls into a sort of thematic place. Much though I don't necessarily think that Joe Biden is the outstanding candidate from the Democrats, to stand up against Trump and beat Trump. He is the only one who has the support and the hope of generations of Americans on his shoulders. There are question marks over his ability to debate in ways that perhaps the quick wit of a Bill Clinton or the assuredness of a Barack Obama would have dealt with a number of doubters within the American populace. However, what I think is very important is that Biden's campaign is one that's run on a safety first message, that they attempt to ensure that what they are not going to lose is lose it. They can't lose it. Another four years of Donald Trump as president of the United States is a terrifying prospect. Not just terrifying for America, but terrifying for the rest of the world. The Paris Agreement, the relationships with China, the influence of Russia, what has happened across the world, what has happened in small towns and small states in the United States where COVID-19 has ravaged and killed people indiscriminately is just the, the biggest symbol that what you have in the White House is a man who couldn't lead himself into Air Force One without a guide. What I've also learnt this week is the influence that certain chaps have at the Scottish Football Association. Daryl Broadfoot appeared on Monday Night Sports Scene in order to tell us that what happened in the decision-making process of the Joint Response Group of the Scottish Football Association when they were faced with the breaches in protocol and indeed government guidelines by Aberdeen and Celtic was that they were going to pause the training of those teams below the Scottish Premiership. Why did you do that? Well, Daryl Broadfoot says, because of the economic imperative. Basically money. About 50%, about half of the income of Scottish football comes from corporate sponsorship. So not having Celtic and not having Rangers playing and not having Aberdeen playing and not having big clubs playing and not have the, spon the, the Premiership working means that a deal with Sky Sports would go. It means that those sponsors who sponsor Scottish football would go. So instead of looking to fairness, which a governing body ought to do, it looked to cash. And the decision that they took was to stop training for the championship clubs and below who were due to start, apart from one, Heart of Midlothian. Now this is the same Heart of Midlothian who were relegated unfairly. The same Heart of Midlothian who went to court to try and overturn that. And because they did that and acted in their own self-interest, the other clubs acted in their own self-interest and fined them. A nominal sum, but it's still a fine of two and a half thousand pounds. And now, on top of all that, of all that unfairness, 
hearts who had been training now had to stop it, along with the rest of the championship clubs. Now, it could have been argued that they would have had an unfair advantage because the season for the championship clubs was about to start. And the other championship clubs, and apparently Wraith Rovers, Greenock Morton and Air United were three championship clubs who had requested permission in order to start the training. So they were told they had to stop too. But Wraith Rovers, Greenock Morton and Air United don't have a semi-final against the biggest rivals coming up in about 10 weeks. Hearts do. So by telling Hearts to stop training because of the fault and indeed the uh, breach of government guidelines by other clubs, they have punished them once again. So in sports sound, what we ended up with was an argument between um, Daryl Broadfoot and the other two who were quite clearly wanting to complain on behalf of Hearts, which were uh, Tom English and also um, Craig Levine. So that has been the, formed the basis of my own uh, scurrilous little piece for the Scottish Football Supporters Association, but it also brings into mind the unfairness that exists within Scottish football. What tends to happen is that you end up with a clear divide between those who have and those in essence that will never have. And it's one of the reasons why I don't want my club ever in the top flight. Not just because I don't want them to fight relegation every year and see the crowds dwindle as it's happened at Hamilton Academical, but also because of the unfairness of a make a ball at the top flight of Scottish football. So, as I meander my way out of this little garden in memory of those who have given their lives in order to retain the freedom and the ability for us to debate, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.